Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to another interesting episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Episode number 225, where we talk about a movie that I thought was going to be really awesome and fun, and it's just flat out freaking weird. It's called Cajillionaire. Mysterious Mike Talent, what's going on, brother? Not much, man. Uh, I, I think I agree with you, man. This one was an interesting movie, to say the least, and I, you know, we're going to have some interesting words about it, I, I, I would say several of them because this is a podcast so that's what happens there's no music there's just lots and lots of words and noises that's true noises (laughs) yes noises and words yes this one was this one this one was a weird movie man i i i don't when i was watching it i was like this seems like a movie that i would pick i'm surprised matt picked this one did you watch the trailer though i did not watch the trailer the trailer is false fucking advertising. Is it a, it well it was it? Was it a just amazingly done? Like should the trailer person win an award? Probably. The trailer tricked me. It made it look like this was a comedy and it was a dark comedy and that it was fun and interesting and quirky. It, they definitely got quirky because this is one of the weirdest quirkiest movies I've ever seen. All right, I all agree that it was definitely quirky for sure. But man, it was it was a strange movie for sure. I, I've seen a lot of strange movies, but this one was strange as well. So, I guess we should talk more about it, though, Matt. Should should I just go ahead and do the rundown, or w- well, what do you want to do? That's exactly how I was going to say. Go. I was going to be Mike. Before we start getting into this movie too far, maybe you should give us a little bit of a rundown, Mike. <laughs> well, thank you, Matt. Uh, so we we're talking about Cajillionaire. Uh, it came out in 2020. During the pandemic, it was uh, directed and written by Miranda July, and it's starring uh, Richard Jenkins, Evan Rachel Wood, Deborah Winger, and Patricia uh, Belcher. And this movie is about a woman's life is turned upside down when her criminal parents invite an outsider to join them on a major heist they're planning. Okay, so I got a bone to pick with you, Mike. Maybe it's not with you. So... The fourth most important character on IMDb, the actress is listed almost at the bottom, and that's Gina Rodriguez. Why did they do that? I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why why they did that. So Gina Rodriguez, who you know from other works uh, such as um, I'm trying to think of one real quick. Uh, Deep Water Horizon, Annihilation, and Jane the Virgin, which is yeah, they, a TV show. Yeah, they put her down way down on the list. I'm not sure why they did that. Right. She is the, no, nah, I'm not going to spoil it yet, but she is the fourth wheel, I guess you would say, to the um, grifters that the grifters are kind of trying to teach how to be a grifter or a con person. And she's a major part of this and she's like at the bottom of imdb which i don't understand i mean she's well known she's not like super well known not like you know evan rachel woods or richard jenkins but she's not a nobody so why did you bury him down i don't know i don't get it and i mean she looked pretty cute in this movie too if you ask me yeah 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 she she looked fine for this movie um but yeah matt this movie what are we what are we going to say man i grifters is kind of an understatement i don't know it's a weird weird bunch these this family i don't know what the hell i can say about this movie i mean uh, this is all about subtext and what you get out of it and what you read into it like 99.9 percent of all independent movies but i mean this shit goes real weird i like the con man part i like that they're a family of con men that are raising a daughter to be a conman, but not treating her like a daughter. And that ends up being a really integral part of this film. And that's why when we were originally talking about it a little bit, when I was texting you, I was like, Jesus, dude, this movie's weird. And then we were trying to interpret what it's about. Let's go ahead and start diving into that a little bit. I, I think this movie is about love, the absence of love, 
and uh, just trying to make your way in this world in any way, shape, or form that you can. Um, so I guess, Matt, like, like you said, this movie is what you get out of it. And to me, this movie was a lot of social commentary on how we kind of all are jillionaires, at least in, in, uh, our cajillionaires in, in America with all of our, our things, or we, we don't look at things the same way. Like, I don't know, this, this group of, of grifters is existing on very little and kind of a, like a, I don't know, a very minimalist lifestyle, partly because they're always stealing from everyone and don't make any money. But the, uh, it just, I don't know. I felt like it was some of that. Um, definitely there's a theme of love and uh, the lack of love and and family dynamics, how that can affect you growing up. But I don't know, man. I feel like it was some sort of social commentary on how we're kind of already have all these things and like we want more but we don't need any more like i don't know like i i felt like that was some of that stuff was in there i i don't know man it was it's a strange movie well i didn't read into the the social commentary aspect of it at all but that's cool mike i mean i can see where it is especially around like the hot tub like the instant they get a spare 150 bucks the first thing they do is go and buy a hot tub of all things and they put it in an their little office building that they're renting's bathroom. It's freaking weird. That's very weird. It's very random. Yeah, there, there's there's definitely some weird stuff. Like um, the bubble factory th- element of this movie is very strange. And the, uh, I guess their landlord, who is the bubbly, bubble factory owner. But the bubble factory was freaking hilarious, dude. Like, who the hell is a bubble factory? And then at certain times of the day, it just pours out of the wall? I mean, that's ridiculous. That was really just funny. I I just, I didn't understand. I, I, I mean, I guess it's funny, but it was just, it was super weird, and I didn't understand what was going on for quite a while. Speaking of uh, walls, Mike, uh, the colors that are behind you on the wall, I, I would pick the purple. Yes, yes, uh, we are... Uh... We are getting ready for uh, baby number two, and uh, yep, we're we're gonna have the purple mat, and and probably like the lighter gray. Okay, all right. Just trying to help out, Mike. Just trying to help out. You know, I, I am a representative of the uh, residential real estate market, so uh, I I can help out with the uh, color palette. Okay, good. <laughs> Right now, I think if if I sold my if I wanted to sell my house, it would sell for a kajillion dollars because like like stuff's just going nuts. My neighborhood, dude, there's a house that listed for like crazy money. You would be a kajillionaire, but you would have to spend a kajillion dollars to get another home, and it would probably be half the size of the home you're in now. Yes, there is that factor, but anyway, you never know. Yeah, I don't need to talk about work, Mike. I mean, you know, it's madness here. It's absolute madness in Arizona. You can't buy a house for half of what they should be. It's 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 insane. It's absolutely insane. So, uh, movies, uh, Kajillionaire, uh, hot yes. tubs, uh, bubbles, bubbles, bubbles lead me, Matt, to ask you a question of what are you drinking? Dude, that's probably one of your best segues ever. Ever. Thanks. I, I felt like I felt like that was a good one. Dude, it was it was on point. Mike, you're stepping up your game. You are awake today. I mean, you're not joking. I'm glad we waited a day to pod. I mean, it's you're on point. So all right, Mike. Well, I'm celebrating because it's been a month and a half since I got a paycheck and I finally got a paycheck. So I'm drinking a champagne of beers. Oh, nice, dude. Nice, Miller High nice. Life. Yep. Miller High Life. It's very good that you're celebrating, man. Um, I am not really celebrating anything, but I'm I'm drinking some of the summer beer again, uh, the summer shandy from Line and Kugel. You're, cele- beer. you're celebrating summer, Mike. Yes, I, I'm celebrating summer, although summer hasn't technically started yet, right? It's like June 22nd or 3rd or something. It's bullshit. It started here. 
I don't know if you I don't know if you know this, but it's uh it's like 115, 118, 120 in Phoenix. When when Prescott up here, when we're at 104, you know Phoenix is getting pounded because we never break triple digits here. And it was hot today. It was real hot today. I spent a large chunk out of, of it out photographing. It was it was brutal. Oh man. That's no fun, man. Uh, triple digits. Wow. Uh, it's been warmer in my neck of the woods, but uh, we've had some rain, so that's also been good. Yeah, we don't know what that is. Ha- have you taken a look at the Hoover Dam and how you can almost see the whole thing now? That's scary, dude. It's legit no, scary. No, I haven't seen that. I actually should probably look that up, dude. I didn't know that. Yeah, look up uh, USA Today uh, Lake Mead and Drought. It's freaky and that was one of my uh uh buddies that did all those photographs for the arizona republic which is owned by the usa today company anyways we'll get back on it so mike it's uh, my turn speaking of uh hoovers no speaking of dams no speaking of superheroes we'll just go with that okay how does kajillionaire relate to the marvel cinematic universe All right, Matt. So like we talked about earlier in the pod, there's about four people in this movie. So uh, none of them were in any of the MCU. So uh, I had to dig a little bit deeper on this one. And uh, I was getting a little worried. I was getting towards the end of the list. But luckily, right at visual effects, I found uh, John Brennick, who worked on this movie and also worked on Thor Ragnarok and Avengers Endgame as a visual effects artist. Dude, I think you should just like if it's like an independent, just go right to visual effects because you know there's only like 20 people that do visual effects in Hollywood and they do all of them. I it appears that there is a small pool of visual effects people. Okay, Mike. So let's go ahead and spoil Kajillionaire. Um, I guess you know we should probably do this. We usually do this before the the beer thing, but that segue was too too money. Um, do I think people should watch Kajillionaire? I'm going to say yes and no. If you like independent films, yes. If you are more of a straightforward person, no. You will hate this movie. Uh, so I I think I'm not going to recommend it. I felt it was pretty boring. And although there is some kind of depth in, in uh, self-questioning with some of the topics that are, you know, presented in this movie i don't know if it's worth it i it, i mean it was really good acting by everyone involved but it was just it's just a strange story man like very socially awkward like family and i felt like richard jenkins character like had like some sort of like he was on the spectrum or something because it's like he seemed very like i don't know snappy with certain things and i don't know it was a he his character definitely had something going on it was just different like the way he reacted to things and like their plans and like it was just i don't know like the mail the mail theft stuff Matt, that was weird that was really weird no dude i i hear you i hear you it's just it's a good indie and the acting was very very good but you're right the story is just not very good at all the cinematography was very, very good, though. Uh, speaking of the male scene, that was really interesting how they shot that. There's a lot of little things that are very, very good for an independent, but the story is not one of them. And, you know, we've talked about this many times on the pod. The story for both of us is a large portion of our rating. It's probably the most important thing in a movie. If it's a low budget piece of crap movie, but it has a great story it's going to get a higher rating than something that doesn't, you know, but that, that's how we operate. Yeah, man, that that's, and you know, there's, um, I guess now Matt, we can do spoilers now, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So the, the kind of the scenes that kind of really bothered me were like the, where they were taking advantage of the old people. 
Oh God, dude! Especially the dude that was like literally dying. That was uh, really, really heart wrenching. Dude, that was pretty brutal, man. I I had that that really uh, kind of turned me off on the movie, man. Like I just, I don't know. I just don't like. I know it happens and stuff, but I didn't like the idea of you know stealing from these old people who are just you know it's like it's like you know my grandmother or whatever she's like just about to turn 95 and stuff and it's like ah, i just no i just didn't like that at all so that that made it hard for me for the rest of the movie honestly to 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 get into it well and that scene went on and on and on i mean it felt like it never freaking ended it was like is he they're like is he dead yet can we go look for the checkbook and it's just like jesus dude like the the dude's still warm and you're gonna rob him freaking blind you know but i mean on the other hand they were trying to do something nice where he liked the sound of you know people in his house and it made him feel like his family was there and all that stuff but still they still robbed from him yeah uh, i know it was uh so that that stuff kind of was hard for me so yeah, that and was, it's just a personal thing, though. I don't. No, know. no, I I fully agree. It shouldn't be a personal thing. You shouldn't. You should respect your elders, not take advantage of them, especially not rob from them. You should listen to them and pay attention. But uh, that's where Gina Rodriguez's character comes in, and she's a counterbalance to these three grifters. She's the one with morals. She's the one that's like, no, don't do this. This makes me feel dirty and all that stuff. And she, as we see towards the end of the movie brings our main character evan rachel wood's character out of her shell and turns her more into a normal human being helping her realize at the age of 26 that there's a lot more to life than taking advantage of people and robbing from people yeah uh i i guess it's i guess we had to go through that to get to that but i don't know man it was it was a long scene it seemed like this movie is long like it just kind of went on and on and I was trying to figure out where it was getting to, (laughs) you know, like, and it's only an hour and 40 minutes and it feels like it's three hours. Yeah. There was a point where I I paused it and I was like, Oh, there's 50 minutes left. (laughs) So like, yeah, it was, it was, this one was not my favorite. Um, uh, and it's actually surprising Matt that I didn't pick this though. Cause I tend to pick these kind of movies. I heard great things about this. I saw reviews about it. I thought this was really going to be the, a completely different movie than what we got. I was disappointed. I'll be honest. I I did not, you know, with a cast like this, I mean, incredible cast, but clearly I'm not a huge fan of Miranda July, especially not when she writes something. So uh, I just got to remember that from here on out. But of course, you know, the critics on Rotten Tomatoes, absolutely love this movie, but the general public is not a huge fan. Yeah, I guess the critics probably just liked it because it was weird. I don't know. I feel like a lot of times when the critics are like, this movie is the most amazing movie, it's just weird. And they're like just happy to see something kind of different or whatever. I, I don't know. I feel like they look for things way different than what, the actual public likes i'm okay with different i like different like i we've hearkened i okay not we i have hearkened back to this many times three billboards absolutely love three billboards i definitely thought that was the movie of the year that was an independent that was a little weird but it wasn't crazy weird and the story was amazing the acting was amazing i really enjoyed that movie and that was technically i think an independent I love stuff like that. This, no, I'm sorry. This was just weird to be freaking weird. Yeah, yeah. Didn't three board billboards lose to The Shape of Water? Yes. And I love the sh- the and I love three billboards. And The Shape of Water was not impressive. Again, it, a weird freaking movie too. Yeah, I guess it was okay. It was just a weird love story with a fish. I don't know. It, it was. It was okay. I like the sci-fi aspects of it, but it was it was it was still a weird ass movie. I mean, why it was a fish. Was, She's trying to bang it out with a fish. It was visually um colorful and nice like cuz you know, um Guillermo del Toro was involved, but it was just I don't know. 
again, it goes back to what I was talking about earlier, Mike. You and I. Story. Story, 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 story. It can be beautiful, but the story has to be at least good. Yeah, the story has to be good. So, um, Matt, I guess talking about that, uh, what are we going to do for this next week? Well, Mike, it is your pick since I picked this hot piece of garbage, or at least in your words, hot piece of garbage. I don't think I rated it as low as you did. But, uh, Mike, what movie are you, are we doing for this next week's podcast? Uh, so we're going to do a sequel to a movie that I thought was really fun, and I don't think got enough people to watch it. And uh, that was called The Hitman's Bodyguard, um, the original movie. And this next one is called The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, uh, both starring uh, Ryan Reynolds, Salma Hayek, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, and The Hitman's Bodyguard, I, I remember when it came out, it was just super funny and a lot of fun. And like, it, it, I don't know, it just seemed like Sam L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds just had a ton of fun making the movie. And it like showed like it just seemed like it was a lot of fun. Dude, it was a sleeper, man. It flew under the radar, and it was great. I really liked that movie. But I really love Sam Jackson. I really love Ryan Reynolds. They're both terrific actors. They always pick pretty good roles. I mean, Sam Jackson pretty much takes any role. And then Salma Hayek, still gorgeous. And she was bringing the funny, too. Yeah, her character in the in the first movie was hilarious and just such a, a good time. So I'm I'm hoping that continues with this one. So hopefully they got the same writers and stuff. I didn't look ahead to see if they did, but uh, anyway, th- this one looks like a lot of fun. So uh, I'm I'm hoping it is. Uh, I'm sure it was supposed to come out last year. So, um, but anyway, this this you know it'll be good to see these characters back in action. Mike, I'm excited for it. Great pick. I'm happy we get to go back to the theater again. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to get time for it. Hopefully there's another really late show, uh, but I think it'll be fun. It'll be a good time, and we need that after this not-so-great independent film. So uh, speaking of not-so-great kajillionaire, Mike, uh, how many reels? All right, Matt. So I was debating, a lot of debating here right now, thinking what I was going to do, and I think I'm going to go with one-and-a-half reels. Yeah, I knew you were going to be pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. Well, I was probably too kind, like I always am, Mike. Again, it the acting was really good. The set, the cinematography was good. There's a lot of things I enjoyed about this movie, but again, I think I'm probably being way too generous. I give it a three. Wow, dude. That's much higher than I would have thought you went. And no, dude, you're not always more generous. This whole year, you've rated everything lower than me, <laughs> except for like two. Yeah, that's true. I, I I have been the bitterness has been floating to the surface. How's that, Mike? <sighs> I know, man. Soon you'll be you won't you won't be a like. Uh, that's why you don't drink IPAs. Yeah, right. I'm bitter enough. Correct. Yeah. I'm just trying to bring it down, you know, I'm trying to even myself out. I got to get more bitter. More bitter? <laughs> it's true. You're too nice, Mike. You need to be more bitter, please. Yes. I've got to get all my old man, get off my lawn. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with kids and stuff now. Yeah. You need to turn into a double IPA. I mean, you need to double down. There you go. Double IPAs and you need one for each hand so you'll become extremely bitter. And then you'll, you'll finally be like, uh, excuse me, sir. Can you please get off my lawn? Yes, yes. I'll do it with that very polite, nice ask. Yeah, exactly. But at least you'll say something. So anyways, all right. Well, I think that is the end of the podcast for us. Uh, Kajillionaire, probably not worth your time. Next week's hopefully will be better. But I have to point this out just because it was so much fun. Make sure and listen to my interview with Lisa live and local on magic 99.1 coming up after the pod. It was one of the best radio interviews we've ever had. We went way over time. I'm sure she got in trouble for it, but we just had a lot of fun, even though the movie wasn't. Well, well, that's good, man. At least, at least you had a lot of fun on, on the radio interview. Yeah, it was, it was great. I like doing it. It's getting better. Cause I'm getting 
used to getting up earlier now, so I'm a little bit more awake by the time I roll into the studio. Because now that the COVID world is slowly fading away, especially in Arizona, um, I'm going into the studio and sitting down and doing it. So when you have that connection face to face, it just works so much better. It's great. Nice, man. Nice. Uh, with that, man, I think I will uh, let everyone go and uh, make sure you uh, follow us on the socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, oh, I'm f- forgetting. Oh, in the Twitters. And, uh, you know, go out there and catch a movie if, if you want in the theater. Uh, the theaters would love that. Or, uh, you know, stream a movie. Uh, the studios would like that. Catch you next pod. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. He has arrived. The one, the only. I Don't get excited. I say this about everybody. Matt Inshaw from The Real Film Nerds podcast on Magic 99.1. Hiya, Matty. Well, nice job bringing me all the way up and then immediately smashing me down. Well, you know you do it for everybody. I, well, the reason How I said you? that is because I just introduced Kelsey Claire the exact same way on Wednesday. And so I was kind of just covering my bottom line there, if you know okay. what I mean. All yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, I mean, it really wasn't that original. I could have said the man, the myth, the legend, but I didn't. I didn't think of it until just now. Now, does legend indicate that I'm old? Well, not as old as some. We'll just put it that way. Okay, good. Good. I'm kind of neutral old. Got it. Got it. I don't even know how old you are, Matt. Don't tell me. This is, this is, I I guess. I want to know if you can guess. I think that you are probably, you're in your late 30s. Yes. Uh, Okay. 37-ish? No. This year, this year I turned the big four. Oh Oh my God. You are old. Yep. I am. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, I was thinking you shouldn't have said anything. I was going to say, I'm already picking out a plot, so... (laughs) I got a nice oh, sh- one up on oh, the hill. Oh, shut up, youngster. Let's talk about the movies. You saw Kajillion- Kajillionaire. Hard for me to say. Yeah, say that one three times Was fast. it hard for you to watch is the question. It wasn't hard, but it's uh, it's not what the trailer advertised. Oh. I thought it was going to be a dark comedy. It was going to be fun. It was yeah. going to be hilarious. And it is not. It is weird. Weird. It's very weird. It's okay. a hardcore indie. Now, it's not a bad movie. Right. I'll put it that way. Okay. But it is definitely not for everyone. It um, it, it explores life, love, the relationship between parents and kids, the relationship of someone being ad- added to this family, and then them going, it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's straight up weird. You're left without words. Pretty much, yeah, it's uh, it was well done. It, the cinematography is really good, but yeah, the script is strange and it bounces all over the place. Mm. And it's just, if you like indies, yeah, definitely check it out. It's a great one. But right. if you want something that's more straightforward, do not watch this movie okay. because you're not gonna like it. Okay, what did you think it was gonna be about? I really thought it was gonna be more about the uh, husband and wife and kid that are grifters that are con men yes there's a level of that in there but it's more about their relationship and what goes on with their daughter and how screwed up she is because they were grifters their whole life and they raised her to be a grifter not to be a kid not to be a person so then someone else comes in and kind of realize helps her realize that you can enjoy life a little bit you can go and have fun and you can do these other things and then you know, they end up grifting her. Right. So. Okay. All right. Very good. So how many reels are you going to give it? Uh, like I said, it, for an indie, it was really good. So yeah. uh, it's probably too high, but I give it a three just because, the again, it was really well done, but it's a strange, weird movie, and that's clearly the intention of the director slash writer because it's the right. same person. Okay. So. Very good. So three out of five reels. Rotten Tomatoes gave it 90%. See, again, that's yeah. the critics, though. The critics right. freaking love these things. Yeah. I never understood that. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't get me wrong. There's some incredible independent films out there. Yeah. But when it gets really weird like this, it's just not my cup of tea. Gotcha. You want something a little more straightforward. I'm cool with weird. I really like mind-bending thinking films that yeah. make you think about yourself and think about life and think about where you're at in this universe. Right. But when you start getting to the point where it's like, 
okay, why did they do that? And why is this going on? And what do they mean by this? When you have to think too much right. and it gets too weird, then it's... Yeah. I, I don't I don't think it does the viewers any benefit. Okay. You look a little disturbed. Uh that's like <laughs> I'm always disturbed. That's 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 how no, I was maybe born. Maybe deep. Maybe deep. I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. you're passionate and I appreciate that. And that's why I have you in here cuz you're a, you're passionate about the films. I, I do. I do like my films. Yeah. I'm passionate about a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's hence the reason why it's called the Real Film the Nerds Real podcast cuz nerds. Right. You know, we're nerds. You, nerds yeah. are Nerds is like, you know, the we were talking about it on the pod a couple weeks ago actually where nerds is just means you're extremely passionate about something. Right. And how it used to be a negative and now it's a positive and anyways. Gotcha. Okay. Little little too much thinking for me right there. I'll just say. I don't blame you. <laughs> It hurts. Yeah, I know. It, it hurts, hurts, especially this it early hurts. in the morning. I know. I know. Okay, what are we going to watch for next week? So next week <laughs> um, is my co-host pick. Uh -huh. There's a movie that is coming out as a sequel to a film that kind of caught everyone by surprise. It is The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Did you ever see the first one? No. It is worth it. It is yeah. hilarious. Yeah, what's it called? It is the first the one? Hit, the Hitman's Bodyguard is the first okay. one. Okay. It is uh, Ryan Reynolds. Samuel Jackson, Salma Hayek, it's just funny. hilarious. Okay. It's so much fun. It's action-packed hilarity. Okay. And when Sam Jackson and Ryan Reynolds, a duo working together. Can't go wrong. No. It's Can't go wrong. amazing. So I'm looking forward to it. Okay, you look and happy now. It's only in the theaters. <laughs> only in the oh, theaters. Oh, it's only in only the theaters. theaters. That was going to be my next yep. question. Where can we on see Friday. it? On yep. Friday. Okay. Coming out on Friday, only in the theaters. Now, the original, I'm sure it's on a streaming service somewhere. Probably. Because it's a couple years old now. Okay. So. I'll look for that one. All right? Okay, good. We'll you have better a chat. watch it. We'll have a chat next Monday. In, in this heat, are you golfing as much when I, it's 105? I am going to golf on Friday because I always golf on Friday. Um, so, but as for the rest of the weekend, maybe I'll be in the inside for a little bit. Okay, there All you right. go. Then you can watch it when you're inside cooling okay. down with a cool iced tea there or other go. beverage. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, check out his podcast. It's The Real Film Nerds. Matt, thanks for hanging out with me this morning. Lisa, thanks for having me. Did you call me Lisa? Lisa. I think you did. Did I say Lisa? 